Well, welcome to the Feast of Holy Cross. Uh, this is always an exciting day within our church. Uh, it's kind of the kickoff Sunday. Our choir is back. Our Sunday school teachers and our kids, they are excited to get their programs going. Everything is starting again. Uh, and we have our barbecue afterwards, our Welcome Back barbecue. And this year, we have the Holy Cross exhibit. So please stick around after that. It's a wonderful and exciting day. Uh, as we are the parish of Holy Cross, the Feast of Holy Cross kind of acts as our patronal festival. Uh, and for preachers, the patronal festival always causes a little bit of a dilemma. So what do you preach on? Do you preach on the readings of the day? Uh, in our case, the importance of the cross. Or do you preach about the life of the community that has gathered, you know, that particular community that has gathered to celebrate that particular feast day? You know, the parish of Holy Cross. This year, I want to do the latter. Uh, I want to talk about the blessedness, the specialness, uh, the nature of what it means to be a community of faith, in particular, how we act together as the community. Uh, if you want to read something about the cross, about the importance of the cross, its meaning, and the place of the cross in the Christian life, there is this fabulous book. Uh, it is called the New Testament, and it talks about this gloriously. It just really lays it out so uh, to read that. But uh, this year, I want to highlight community. Uh, and I want to begin by saying, uh, as a matter of fact, not as a matter of belief, that this community here, it is a special and it is a blessed community. I was remarking and thinking about my past experiences of the community of faith and uh, some of the most memorable and meaningful experiences of what it means to be a part of the community, particular two times, have both occurred on Monday, Thursday, in this building. Uh, the first was my first Monday Thursday when I came here seven years ago. Now I'm not going to go into the crazy details of the event. Uh, those of you who are here will probably remember it quite well. Those of you who weren't, uh, well here's the cold notes version. Monday Thursday service being interrupted by somebody spinning in the aisles. Uh, there is the fainting of a choir member once the fainting of the choir member twice, uh, and then the paramedics taking vital signs right in front of the altar during the Eucharist. There you go. I remember uh, feeling in that moment in a situation where all my training completely went out the window, where I had no clue what to say or what to do. I remember feeling that I was upheld by the community of faith. Right? And the larger community, I could rest upon the words of the liturgy. I could let the liturgy just do its work. I could, I could feast myself on the prayers which were being offered all around me. And I could look out at the presence of those who reminded me that in this crazy situation, I did not stand alone. I was reminded of that um, the second Monday, Thursday, uh, which was this past Monday, Thursday. People at the Seder Supper may have noticed my absence uh, from the Seder, actually the entire Norman family absence from the Seder. And the reason why I was not at the Seder Supper was because at that point, Alicia and I, at this very same time, we were at the Tom Baker Cancer Center for our first meeting. Now, we had known since last year, late last year, that there was a problem. Alicia was in constant pain. Uh, she had a lot of tests, and we had known that there was some sort of growth, some sort of tumor, and although the doctors continually told us at that point that it was benign, that everything was fine, uh, and so she had uh, just a minor surgery to remove that, that growth. Well, of course, as we all know, it turned out that it wasn't uh, benign. So on Monday, Thursday, uh, we traveled down to the Tom Baker Cancer Center for what we thought was just a simple discussion about possible treatment options. The discussion, however, uh, went more like, you need to undergo chemotherapy, sign this paperwork, you start on Thursday. So obviously there was a lot of emotions, there was some fear that we were experiencing. 
Monday, Thursday, I literally drove Alicia home from signing paperwork to start chemotherapy, turned around and came here to take the Monday, Thursday service. And as I stood celebrating the Eucharist and saying the words that we say every single Sunday, this is my body which is given for you. I heard those words echo back to me. That it was in the midst of this crazy situation where again, I just didn't know what to do. And I didn't know what the future was gonna bring. That it was in this crazy situation where I am stretched to my farthest, that Christ offers himself to me in love and in sacrifice and in grace. But that gift of offering isn't just, you know, me and Jesus alone on our island and everything is fine. That is mediated through the community. That is, as I am surrounded by a community of faith. That's the importance of the community. That when we enter into a place where we have no frame of reference, we can look out and remember that we are being upheld. And that the power of Christ is being shown and mediated through the gathered collection of faithful people. Part of what I wanted to do today in the sermon, and I've known that I wanted to do this for a while, part of what the sermon is about is just to say thank you. You know, in scripture, Paul often begins his letters by saying, I thank God every time I remember you in my prayers. And the Norman family has been thanking God for this community since Monday, Thursday. There is no way, of course, that I can highlight every single thing done. But I want to let you know that we have felt your prayers. We have experienced tangible expressions of your love and of your concern. This community was present every single step of the way. This community uh, went the extra mile. Whether that was our honorary assistants taking services and in the midst of my own stubbornness, forcing me to accept it. Whether it was the gift of someone mowing the lawn or taking Solomon to church uh, or to the zoo. Whether it was giving me the grace uh, and the understanding when I felt more scatterbrained than I had ever felt. Or the countless gifts of meals that were offered and received, often with little notes attached to it. We never felt isolated. We never felt alone. We never felt that that road that we were having to travel was one in which we were just doing it by ourselves. I have to say, it was wonderful uh, to go down kind of week after week to the freezer downstairs in the lower hall. And I would open up the lid and I would find packages that simply said, to the Normans. And it was partly because uh, they never really were signed. You know, I never knew where they were coming from. And so I would see these packages labeled for the Normans and it became an expression of love and care from the community as a whole. And Solomon, he actually commented at one point. And of course, he's trying to wrap things through his 10 year old brain. Um, and he's trying to put into words his own experiences of everything that's going on. Uh, and he said, you know, I guess one of the good things coming out of chemo is all the food that we've been getting. It's like the church is our shopping center. He got it. Right? He understood that the meals given, that the rides provided, they were ways in which this community of faith said, we love you and we are here for you. It was wonderful to be able to have conversations around the dinner table where we pointed to everything that was going on and say to him, you know, this is why church is important. And it's not because it's how you've been raised. It's not because it's what we always do. It's not because dad works at the church. It is because it is in the love shared between us as a community of faith that we really get to feel what it means to be loved by Jesus. The grace and the power and the work of God flows through each other. 
And it is through each other acting in faith towards each other that we experience the blessings of God. As a priest, I'm used to being the person who needs to have it together. Part of my personality is one where I don't accept help very easily. So I am used to muscling my way through things. I'm used to challenging myself. I'm used to charging ahead. And I'm used to really not opening up about my, my need. I keep it very much internal. And so this whole process for me, it was a stretch. It was a good one. But it was a stretch that when people asked, you know, what can we do for you? To actually believe that they wanted to help. And they were not just being polite. And so when people say, what can we do to you? To actually, you know, take a deep breath and be bold enough and to trust the community enough to say, you know, we need dinners. Or I need someone to mow my lawn. And that was uncomfortable for me to say. But was, it was in that letting down of my guard and trusting the community and in some sense the risk that is involved in that trust in which I entered a deeper place of understanding what community is about and also experienced the presence of God through the community in a deeper way that I have ever felt. See, community does that. It forces you outside of yourself. But it is in that stretching in which you kind of let down your walls and bear your need that we experience the grace and the power of God. To be truly in community, you cannot remain in your own individual castle. You have to be a part of a larger body. You have to connect with people. And in order to connect, you have to let yourself be known. Take right now, for example, we come here to worship. We come to respond to the Spirit of God. And we may be tempted, and particularly in our very kind of individualistic culture today, we may be tempted to think that our Christian lives are lived in kind of a me plus Jesus kind of way. You know, it's just me and my buddy Jesus Christ, and you know, we just, you know, we hang out together, and this is about our personal relationship here. Christian faith is then about what I believe about Jesus and how I interact with him in my own personal way. So person A does their churchy thing beside person B who does their churchy thing, but they're doing it individually even though they're beside each other. That's not the vision of community that scripture holds up that God calls us to be. Community is not formed through this massive gathering of just isolated individuals. Right? Both the Hebrew and the Greek word for community, they have this notion that community is found in people gathering together to act in unison as the people of God. They are united for the purposes and the praise of God. We come together. We are one through the presence of the Spirit. So the church is not just about what you do and what I do individually. It is what we do together in tandem with the Spirit. We worship God as one body. It is that dynamic of independence, interdependence, in which the Spirit of God is fully revealed in our midst. And when a community is able to do that, when a community in authenticity and integrity and in passion prays together, sings together, serves together, uplifts and supports each other as the one body of Christ. It is a special and it is a blessed thing and it is filled with the power of God. This community is here is a community that has done that these past months. This community is a special and it is a blessed community. And I say this not because I'm paid to, it is, I say this because I've experienced it through you. Jesus is alive and Jesus is active in this place. Jesus is alive and active in our midst. I am continually struck by how this community labors to be attentive 
to what God is calling us to. There is a depth of of prayer here. There is a willingness to go into the unknown places of life. In recognition that Jesus will guide the way, there is a bold willingness to step out in faith. There is a spirit, there is a wonderful spirit of welcome and hospitality here. There is a willingness to give, willingness to offer yourself in the, for the building up of the community, of the wider body. I can say in these past months since Easter that my own faith has deepened, my own faith has grown. And it's not just because my family has gone through a hard time, it's because I have experienced the life and the ministry of a community of faith in new ways. It's because I have experienced the presence of God through this community in a deeper way. I have become convinced that to grow in faith is to dive deeper in community and to experience the presence of Jesus through the love and the prayers of others. And then in return, to bear that presence to them. So again, I want to say thank you. And I hope that you feel encouraged as a member of this community. I hope that you feel that you have been blessed, that you have been upheld. And I would actually say, I hope that you feel that you are being blessed, that you are being upheld in your life. I hope that you recognize the blessed reality that surrounds us. That as we gather here, we live out what the kingdom of God is like, which is a body of people in fellowship with each other, united by the Holy Spirit in praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to bow your head as we pray. Loving and most holy God, you are a fellowship within yourself, and so you call your church to live in fellowship with you and with each other. We thank you for this parish of Holy Cross, for those who have made up this community in the past, for those who presently make this loving body, and for those whom you will call into our midst. We thank you for your gifts bestowed amongst us, for your work done through our lives and prayers, for your presence found in our coming together. Send your grace upon us so we may continue to live, to work, to serve, and to share our faith and gifts with each other. We ask this in the name of God, who is one in community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.